Massive. This is massive, folks. Now, I'd missed this, but this explains why we got this run up in stocks and in crypto over the last month. Let's take a look here. TED Talks Macro. There's a new player in town. China's central bank performed its single largest liquidity injection on Friday. So last week, folks, we got the single largest liquidity injection ever in China. To help support the economy out of historically depressed levels, there's more to come. More to come on the way. China ramps up cash injection to prevent funding stress. And this is the uh, People's Bank of China right here. People's Bank of China cash injection via reverse repos. And you can see that chart. They took this thing back to all time high. 600. That's a 600 billion cash injection. And that's that's Chinese yuan back into their banks in their reverse repo. So we've seen that the reverse repo in the United States has hit all time high recently as well. And they, they, they were injecting a bunch of liquidity back in over there still are. I think it's about 2 trillion is what it reached in the United States. We have 600 billion here in China. Now check this out, folks. Let's continue on uh, right here. China boasts the world's second largest economy and has recently expanded at a pace of 2.2% faster than the United States. The People's Bank of China are the world's third largest central bank with about 6 trillion in assets and play a key role in global liquidity. So total assets of major central bank, you have the Fed, you have the European Central Bank, you have the Bank of Japan, and you have the People's Bank of China. Excuse me. Major central banks, total assets, you got the People's Bank of China up there, third largest, third largest. While most analysts are focused on how the Fed tightening will reprice risk assets this cycle, they're failing to consider the scale of easing in the East. Japan, the fourth largest central bank plus China, are injecting liquidity into global markets, easily outpacing the Fed tightening efforts. So the Fed is supposed to be doing quantitative tightening, right? They're with uh, restricting the amount of injection, while we have Japan, which has been going on a major, major bond buying spree, buying back their own treasuries, and China injecting liquidity into the global markets, easily outpacing the Fed's tightening efforts. Thinking of global liquidity rather than the U.S. in isolation could prove to be more powerful when analyzing crypto markets. The Fed are tightening risk off, but the world's third and fourth largest central banks are easing, actually causing an uptick in global liquidity. So right here, he shows you a chart, crypto plus gold in global liquidity, and you can see this chart right here. I'm going to pull this up, and I actually want to show you guys this chart, crypto plus gold Uh Crypto plus gold and global liquidity. So as that global liquidity runs back up, and it's been happening mostly with Japan and China, we see crypto and gold going back up, right? And we saw, we've been talking about the Binance USD uh, getting printed at the Paxos Treasury. We've been talking about USDC getting printed at USDC Treasury. We've been talking about Tron, Binance, CZ, the slush fund that CZ was using as... Um, he was using Binance US to funnel money back into their own trading, $400 million, okay? And then we saw hundreds of millions of Binance USD getting printed uh, at the treasury there at Paxos last month at a time. This was multiple times where we just see hundreds of millions of BUSD printed. And then on January 20th, we had 148 injected, 148 million USDC injected by the USDC treasury as well. So we have the central banks of Japan and China uh, filling in, pumping in, injecting liquidity, and then that's getting funneled right there into the crypto space as well. Okay. So let's understand this situation here. I think that it is look interesting to see, uh, and follow this money trail. Crypto is not tied to any particular economy or entity, but rather is a liquidity junkie. It longs for the risk hungry investor to get cash and bet on the fastest horse. That's set to be exactly what will happen this year in China. The making of an economic recovery in China were evident when the zero COVID policy was abandoned in late 2022. Lockdowns during 2022 derailed the expansive growth, but that's been so char characteristic of China's economy in the 21st century. So now we're opening it back up. We're sending it over there in China. The end of this policy has helped lift demand plus resume consumption. New Chinese bank loans hit a record 
4.9 trillion won in January, a 23% increase year over year. Analysts suggest that this data could indicate that the economic recovery in 2023 has the potential to exceed the pre-pandemic level. Folks, they're ramping it back up. This renewed demand has placed stress on the Chinese banking sector. If liquidity is not ample enough to meet demand, the system struggles, and that is what that that's what has happened recently. Rates on short-term borrowing hit the highest level since early 2021 last week. Q, the People's Bank of China, and that's the chart that we just showed you guys, 600 billion of liquidity injected. The People's Bank of China are showing that they are keen to play their role in stimulating the Chinese economy. Last Friday, 92 billion USD net was injected to bring down borrowing rates and make cash easier to come by, which is not too dissimilar to what the Fed did during the pandemic. Economists and analysts expect this to be the theme out of China in 2023. Many expect the People's Bank of China to cut rates in the coming months to further support and promote a prolonged economic recovery. So just think, guys, if they cut rates and they're doing a record amount of liquidity injection, right? You'll see where this goes. Of course, not all of the cash injected by the People's Bank of China will end up in risk assets, but I'd bet that a decent portion of it will. Just like we saw from the West in 2020, heightened liquidity from central banks equals prices of risk assets like Bitcoin go up, okay? So let's watch this one. If they continue that liquidity injection, and especially if they have not done the regulations and basically the United States is kind of just held with this gray cloud over the crypto space and it allows all this money to get funneled back into the machine, right? The stable coins get pumped, CZ and other operators within the space continue to inject liquidity. We could see this thing run up further, right? And so this is why we've positioned ourselves both ways. Whether they send it or whether they destroy it, we're positioned for this market either way it goes, right? If, if risk on assets go up, we're in crypto, right? And the precious metals could, could go up as well as we see the gold going up with that liquidity injection as well. And why is that? Why is that? It's because they're getting the money out of that country as fast as they can. Whenever they open up and lift their capital restrictions, you see hundreds of billions of dollars flow out of that country. Now, I wanted to verify this, so I did go and I did Google this. And sure enough, if you look here, China ramps up cash injections. The People's Bank of China offered up 835 billion won, 121 billion dollars of cash via the seven-day reverse repo contracts on Friday, resulting in an injection of 632 billion won on a net basis. That's the largest one-day addition on record in data going back to 2004. So absolutely massive, folks. Let's continue to watch it. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.